season where there is that level of uncertainty, how does that affect how you've been able to recruit over over the past couple of weeks? Does that sort of have a, a bearing on your mindset? Does it have a bearing on the mindset of players you're speaking to? Have finances come into it at all or are clubs still pretty much at the same level they were last season? We've, I'll just, sorry boys, I'll to jump in. We, we've, um, I spoke to my chairman early when, when the season got um, cut short and finished and my budget wasn't set until we got a, a start date for the, um, for the season. So it was, it's only like the last week I've been really talking to my chairman about, about finances. What, what he did say was the players that are leaving, anybody who comes in has to be on has to be on less because we're reducing our budget, but they never actually set a budget for me. So in terms of, in terms of recruiting players, that's difficult because you know, you're know you like, right, can I go and get another three or four? If I can't, I'm going to have to look at um, into my academy. If the academy kids aren't ready, right, we've got to do, do a little bit of wheeling and dealing. Um, but like I said previously, we're, we're set by... My chairman wants wants bums on seats. He wants, you know, he's 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 very much um, a step by step chairman. You know, he wants to get there, but he said, "Look, could give you the biggest war chest in the world, but then, you know, in a year's time, if something happens to to my company or whatever, then then the clubs the club will fall short." So um, our crowds have steadily gone up over the last four or five years. We've sold a lot of players to football league clubs. Um, but we do things in the community. We, you know, like I said, we do driving movies. You know, we do we do car boot sales. Um, they've been doing this takeaway takeaway brewery where you know where people drive over big jugs of beer in it. And you know, so um, for me to turn around and, and and demand a budget in you know April and May uh, when the club's just about to survive, I'm you know I'm I'm part of that club, um, and I love the club. You know, so I work with my chairman with that. It's difficult when I look at the non-league paper and I see clubs in my division signing ten and twelve players. But um, I'm, you know, I'm I know there's going to be about two thousand players out of contract coming out of the football league. You know, and for me as a player, you know, I play for eighteen years, and that's the worst time when you come to the end of the season and you're out of contract. Um, and then you got to chuck coronavirus, COVID on top of that as well. Knowing clubs are going to have reduced budgets, um, there's going to be a lot of, lot of players available. So I think I'm going to bide my time, see what's about, um, and just take it from there. I agree. There's going to be so many players available. Yeah. It's just got to be in, for, for me, recruiting two areas, and I'm in absolutely, like you, John, I'm in absolutely no hurry. Yeah, yeah. yeah for, for me, like, boys, um, recruitment, I found it tough. I found it tough, like, we're at a stage, you know, we talked, we won't go right into it, but we talked about budgets and teams you're against and things like that in non-league, yeah? Um, so we're, we, we was at the top end of step three. Was we the best team last season over the whole season? Probably not. But we was in that top three, top three mix, um, you know, I'd argue we was top two, but I don't understand if people put us top three, yeah? So the player we need to improve us now, you know, you can imagine he's not going to be cheap. Mm. Um, so rec- recruitment, I'm in a different stage here as well. We go where m- m- my team's set. It's all about getting the mentality right this year. Um, I really believe in what we've got as well. I really do. Um, but also, a lot, of it, a lot of the success in our season won't just be defined what we, we do. It'll be defined... Like how right these bigger clubs get it this year, um, but we 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 really believe in what we're doing and how we do it. You know, we had we identified targets and then number two targets if we didn't get them. Um, we're happy with, with, with the business we've done. It's only three players, a couple of local boys, and then a, you know a centre half who's who, who's who's been a real good player. Um, he's still only 24, 25. Um, the question come up a couple of times: players asking for contracts. I mean, we only have two boys on contracts at the minute. Um, I've never brought a player into the club and given him a contract from the outset. Does that make sense? They've come yeah. in, done well, then I've given them a contract. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I agree. 
but the players are after a little bit more security because of COVID. They want to go on the contract, um, a couple I've spoken to. And it's probably cost us, it's cost us these players that, that are wanting to sign. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, like it was, you know, it's, it's right. So I asked the chairman at the beginning of lockdown, and, you know, he said, you know, it's common sense. You don't really. I ask a question, he gives me the answers. Do you know what I mean? It's not something you really want to be doing, is it? It's, you know, like you don't know if you're going to play again. So, you, I mean, the time we didn't have a start date, you know, so you yeah. can't be giving these players contracts. You know, they've done their deals um, and they've, they've got the contracts where they are, to be fair to them. So, you know, kudos to them. But, like, it weren't a position we're in. For me, you talk about money and finances. I don't, I think it's as crazy as ever. I don't think, the, 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 I don't think the money's dropped out of the game. Why would it yet? No one's, no one's hit, no one's hit hard times. But what I do think is over the next year or two, I think there will be a bite on clubs. I think, um, yeah. I think not adding gates. I mean, none of them have not had, had, had gates yet. If you've had a boy on a contract, um, which is the reason they're good for shutting normally football down. You know, these clubs need they need to know because they've got lads on contract. That's rubbish. Yeah. We, we had the furlough system. The furlough system helps these clubs in these moments. Um, you know, so for me. There'll be a process now if fans can't get into grounds or these big clubs can't have the, the crowds they was going to have or they give boys contracts mid-season and the furrow scheme isn't put in for a three or four week uh, lockdown, which I don't think it will next time. I don't think if you've got six, seven players in the contract and you can't play football four weeks and the crowds can't come in in them four weeks, I don't think the government's going to turn around and say, we're going to pay your players because they, I think clubs have got a responsibility as well now to know that this might happen again, to know there might be a spike again, yeah. you know, to not give the contract if you can't afford to play if they have to stop again. I'm, and that's, I'm in that. and that's where I think that's where I think the little bite will come in. You know, I think the bite will come in the back end. People's businesses will be hit over the next year. Chairman's businesses will be hit over the next year, and I think next summer, next summer might be the one where this. I mean, the crazy money gets paid in the million. Seven, eight, nine hundred thousand pound a week players. It's ridiculous. Do you, do you, do you know what's going to be tricky, right? Is that if you, I, I'm in. I, I'm going to put only a couple of players on contract. They're young players. They're 18. They're not going to be on big money, but they're potential assets to the football club. Yeah. Right. So if we were to go into lockdown again, it's not going to break my club to have to look after them. That's the thought process you put in, Hugo. That's what but, I'm talking about. Yeah. But if you then put on players that are on a bit more money, more experienced players, or if you can only sign a player, he's saying, to you, "Well, I want a contract," but then. We've got to now think as managers about our clubs. So, if I start putting loads of players on contracts, how is it going to affect my club? Like you say, if there's no furlough scheme next time, how is it going to affect my club if we go into lockdown? But then, what that does, if this play, if you sign this player and he's non-contract and he and he rips it up, then he's open, then isn't he, for seven-day approach rather than someone mm. having to come in and. Of course, mate. But yeah. this so it's, it's, it's a really difficult hard, thing to think, you know, to consider. Yeah, you know, the club has to come first. I think you said, John, the club, the club survival is more important yeah. than the players. Of course, mate. Listen, listen normally, if you, look, if you look at it, no matter how good this boy is, yeah, you know, he could be ready for Premier League football. But if you look at it and your club can't sustain that without gates, they can't yeah. sustain that. You ain't got a channel of money in the bank to pay him. If you can't none of us can sustain that, football without crowds. Yeah, if you can't sustain that, Hugo, don't give him a contract. That's no, 100%. That's, that's that's my that's point. That, yeah, but, but that's, that's that's that club situation. But you loads know. of clubs are doing it, though, Jimmy. They're giving out contracts, even <laughs> in the division <laughs> below me. They're putting all these players on on high amounts of money on contracts. Mate, that's exactly going, what I'm saying. In terms of them. we haven't been able to do that, and other clubs are doing it still. Like, I haven't yeah. noticed any difference in this in recruitment this summer. I've, I've noticed no difference. It's, at it's, all. it's just irresponsible, then, no. But next year, I do think next year. When, when like, we're, we're going to go into a massive recession, we're already in it, right? I do think next year and the year after, that's when football will feel it. I don't yeah. know. If, I, mate, the, the money's being paid around at, at our level. It's crazy. It's scary. It's crazy. It's I, crazy. Jimmy, Hugo, I, I think, I, I don't know about, about, about your division. There's, and obviously, you know, I was a player, player manager for five years. I, I've probably stepped away from the, the playing side of it now managing a bit more, you know, I still keep myself fit. Um, yeah. So I know, I know a lot of the players at the clubs, I know a lot of the managers. Um, yeah. And the money that 
is being spoken about now, like that's been paid from March, April, May, June, July. It's, it's just it's like it's gone beyond what I even thought it's this could be. Yeah, there's players now. Um, I won't name the club. I won't name the player. There's a player now because his money is um, uh, higher than what I've ever known. He's his deal is probably about 50, 55k a year. Now, in your division? division? In my division, yeah. So, like, I, he's a good player. I went and spoke to him. That's and he all, <laughs> it, yeah, when, he, when, he, when he said, he said to me, he said, um, I went, had a coffee with him, and um, he said, uh, I was talking like, let's say twos a week, kind of, kind of mid twos, 250 ish. And he, he looked at me and he went, he went, Mac, he went, no, mate. And I said, what? He went, you got no chance. And I said, and he, he told me what he was on. And I was like, oh, my God. And it was, there was a signing on fee. There was a gold yeah. bonus. There was this. There was, and I said, look, I said, you got to go, mate. I'm, I'm not. I can't sign you. So, um, like I said previously, my recruitment was done. Um, I, got a, I got two players from Kids Grove, the league below, uh, a left back called Alex Morris and a centre half called James Butler. Um, James Butler went to Hartlepool on loan from Kids Grove. So he went up, up, up two divisions. Yeah. Um, he's 20 years of age and he's going to be a player. This boy is going to be a player. But what I love about him and his family, his family are like, no, he doesn't. We don't want him to go play 23s football uh, at, a, at, a, at yeah. an Oxford or, or, or a Stoke. We want him to come and, and continue his, his football education with you at Mickelover because we believe that's the right pathway for him. So, so that's the kind of kid that I want from that kind of background. Yeah, that's perfect. Like that's, I spoke um, about earlier about having yeah. fire in your belly. Yeah, and he's he's coming. He's twenty years of age. He's vocal. Um, you know, he's 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 keen. He's a leader at the age of twenty because he's he's played he's played 90, 90 games at non-league. You know, yeah. my my you know my son has gone and signed for Coventry, but he played. He played 15 odd games for Mickelover last year, so yeah. he's a 17 year old who's. Mate, so that's, that's, you know, that's not for you to, not for you to point to as well, though. You have got this conveyor belt of players going through. Yeah, yeah. Just being one of them. And, you know, you talk about, you know, like, you, like I think players, they respect playing for a man. They expect, you know, you, you don't mumble when he talks, he's straight to the point. And yeah. And he, he can back up what he says with, with honesty. Now, you've, you've actually, you talk about practicing what you preach in life, yeah. You've actually done it with your son. You've actually brought yeah. your son, your son, into non-league, and yeah. he's now onto a professional club. Yeah. You know that's that's going to do a lot for you, John, mate. Over the next two, three years, when you're trying to sign these young boys at 20 year old who have got yeah. that that ability to step forward. Do you know what I mean? And and Jimmy, I I got I got uh, I got ridiculed. I got I got questioned. I got um, you know like we we've got a really really strong junior section uh, at Mickelow. We've we've got like 40 junior teams. And you know we, you know we we were we were getting questions like, you know that's favoritism and and I, I I held my hands up and I said look, it's not because he's my son it's because he's good enough you know and and he did he 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 went from like a size eight shoe to 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 a size ten he went from five foot uh, nine and he's now six foot two, but what he has been he's been in he's been in change rooms with me from the age of four. He's heard, he's heard effings and blindings. He's heard team talks. He's heard, he's heard praises. He's, he, he, he's been in it. And that, the, the, 20, the season he spent last year with us at Mickelover, like he had Pablo Mills um, as his mentor at centre half. He had, um, you know, me. He'd, he'd my assistant, Ricky Ravener, who's played four or 500 league games. So, and Jay, Jay, my son, knew that. He was never going to get looked after. It's 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 three points on a Saturday, and if you don't if you don't chip in, you're going to cost us league positions. Whereas, 23 is football. Yeah. Uh, listen, it, we've all seen it's a bit right. You have it for 20 passes. Oh, oh, okay, you've had a shot. Now we'll have it for 20 passes. Yeah. I've walked. Listen, We're, I've walked out of 23s games in the first half because I just don't yeah. understand what they're doing. Yeah. We play the 23s team. Um, we. Last preseason, uh, it was behind closed doors game, and they played off in the back. In the first five minutes, we pressed, we nicked it, 
we scored. Five minutes later, goal kick. They played off from the back. We pressed. We scored. It was ridiculous. It, there was there was no plan B. There was no right. Do you know what we're going to do? I we're wonder what they do all week. You know, from their training. Oh. I, just I just don't know what they do. I don't get a lot of it. Well, there's a lot of exceptions. Swan, you know, they they practice like the same thing, but I think what John's saying, and I think I think it's a lot. A lot of this, you know, like I say, we, I think our football is exciting. It matches up to anyone in the division, but you know, there's there's not enough pragmatism, is there? There's not enough enough pragmatism in approach. There's not enough will to find a way. Like you know, a, a lot of what people do, you know, it, it can be more fashionable than than. Um, What's the, so people use the expression, don't they? We play the right way. Yeah. What's the right way? The What's right the right way, way? to win. Yeah. So people say to me, "What's your philosophy on football?" And do you know what my answer is? I said, "Well, well, I'm working with the first team. Simple to win. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what because, we're here to do. That's what because, we're employed to do. Because ultimately, because ultimately, if you get Jimmy, Hugo, and John in." In six months' time, if they've lost twelve games on the bounce, then then Jimmy, John, and you got out of jobs. Yeah, and and they wouldn't be talking about you know twenty passes and King. You know, you wouldn't no. be talking about the thing. No, the, the things all, I can feel. The things I can feel. I tell you what, mate. I had it. I had it at step four. We was bottom of the league, and you know we just had back to back promotions. You go in, you got a, you got a bit about you, a bit more confident. You feel like you can say things because you've had that success. There ain't nothing like. You know, I'll say bum instead of the word I will use. There's nothing like a kick up the bum, yeah, to change your whole perspective on football and how you think about it and how you look at it. I think we lost, I think we lost 11 out of 12 games. Eight of them was, was by one goal. We weren't far yeah. away, yeah. But it was tough times, do you know what I mean? It was yeah. really, t- really, really tough times. Tough mentally. And you do question yourself. You do. Um, I think now, I think, I personally think the best thing that's ever happened to me as a, as a manager was those four or five months. I really, yeah, yeah. I really believe that. You know, like, yeah, there's been four first finishes that you could last year. I know that didn't finish, but, and then in between it's sandwiched by 12. I've had five bad months as a manager, yeah? All my education came in those five months. It was mm-hmm. brutal. They're normally yeah, yeah. doing, mate. Like, people talk about football, and what I found is, you know, we'd have a tippy-tappy winger at our level, yeah? Skillful, go by quick. It'd be five, six, five, seven. You go in the Northern League, you have the same tippy tappy winner, he's six foot, he's like that. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's a brutal league. Um, you know, I can, I learn, I learn on the job a bit, really, in, in that league. Um, the step, uh, I mean, I played that under Steve Evans when I was a young, young boy at Stanford. Mm. But I, the, 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 the level I played that was in the southern side um, and it was, a, it was a different experience mate I'll tell you that now yeah. and what happened we then prepared to be in that Northern League the next year and that preparation I think won as the Southern League because a lot yeah. of kids couldn't handle yeah yeah. Handle it. yeah 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 we played football don't get me wrong we, we played as much like I say we played as much football as anyone we, what do I mean, you do? We, we were top goal scorers in, in England at step three or top two goal scorers in England yeah, at step three last year I think in England in my five years in charge, I think three of them have been, two of them have been the top goal scorers in England. One of them, we was, we was second. No, I think two of them have been second. So you, that gives you a, it gives you an insight, like we are an attacking team. Mm. But the psychology involved in the Northern game, to be up for a battle every time you walk over that white line, you can't have an off day, you can't have a day off. Mm. It, it, it just, you know, it, it, it prepared me, it prepared me for the battles that, that we're having now. Yeah, I I, um, I had a similar thing, Jimmy. Um, two seasons ago, we we were like we we went away to Bamber Bridge, last game of the season, uh, and we had to we had to win to stay up, um, and you know we were one 0 down and we scored scored two two late goals. Um, wow! And <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. We scored in the scored in the seventy eight minute, and we scored again in the eighty fifth minute to, to oh, stay up and. Um, I remember like that following, we had a few beers come back on the bus and I remember that following morning being sat down in the cup team, my wife, and um, she said to me, she went, wow, she went, you look, you look mentally, mentally gone. And I, I was, but you know what? I regrouped myself and Jimmy totally agree with you. I learned more about myself and my management style and my players 
and my football club than I ever had done in the previous two and a half years yeah. within, that, within that framework of like five months. And I thought, you know what? This ain't happening again. So my recruitment got better. I recruited characters. I recruited like only players that I'd, that I'd, I'd known and I'd watched. So last year, I watched a centre forward called Paddy Webb. He was playing for Eastwood, um, two divisions below us. He scored a lot of goals. And people were saying to me, yeah, but he won't make the step up. And I'd, I'd been and watched him five times. I watched him uh, on, a, on a Tuesday night uh, in Nottingham, like one of these silly cup games. And he was lashing down and he scored a hat-trick. Um, I signed Paddy in, in January, just gone. And by the time the season finished, he'd got eight league goals. Uh, January to, yeah. to March, he got eight league goals. And didn't cost me a whole pile, but like, I knew what I was getting. I knew what yeah. I was recruiting. So that's, that's where I've gone with it. Whereas before, people would ring me and go, look, there's a, there's a centre half, great non-league experience. And you go, all right, fair enough. And I, I've been burned by that. I've been burned by bringing in like a, a named non-league centre half or a yeah. named non-league centre centre forward. Whereas, you know, the ones that will run through a brick wall for you, a bit further for you, those boys are worth 15 points a season. Mate, that could change it's, room. It's, listen, having a bond with your players, mate. But not, see, I'm, I'm, I'm big on this. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm big on this, yeah. Um, cliches and little mottos and all that. You know, people, and, and you know, you only sing when you're winning. Like, they, they don't mean nothing to me. I'll tell you what, after that run, that run, they, they mean nothing to me. You know, mm. there's, I, I, I think in our dressing room, we've got, a, <clears throat> we've got a bond that goes bigger than, than winning and losing. Mm. And that comes back to what you said, John, about having the right type of character. Yeah. Now, now that's a skill. That's a skill. In terms of recruitment, 100%. It's a skill, mate. Now, to know, to know what kind of boy you're getting, to know what he's going to give you, everyone says, oh, a tough Tuesday night, wherever, yeah? People still make that mistake every year. Even at the top mm. level of football, they, buy, they, buy, they, they bring in players, they buy players who come in and they don't, yeah. they don't, they don't give them and, and what, what they need and the club don't get what they need from it. Now, sometimes my fear is of a promotion that I don't want to be back in that place again. I'll tell you yeah. that now. I had it step four, coming up to step three. And that's my drive. Like, I don't want to be in that hole again. I don't want mm. to be, you know... I remember one day, mate, this is the, the levels football goes to me. Like, I remember one day we, we got hammered on the Saturday. It was a bad day. And the Sunday, I literally sat in my room, like, didn't get out of bed. We left the curtains drawn, just sat there looking at the ceiling, thinking about the football. Like, yeah. you, lose, you lose your way. And the reason was, is because I wasn't ready mentally. I wasn't ready mentally. Yeah. I was only ready to win, John. Yeah. I was only ready to win because all we had done is won. When it came to losing, when it came to losing and being in that position, I had fight. I'm still here. Do you know what I mean? I, didn't yeah, yeah. I, would, I would never quit. I would never quit. I quit at the top, you know, and if things weren't right, I'd go at the top. But I'd yeah. never walk at the bottom because I wouldn't want people yeah. to say, oh, he's left. You know, I want people yeah, yeah, to have an yeah. opinion on me. You know, that, and that, and, that, and, that Jimmy, matters to me. And Jimmy, that, that mentality and that attitude rubs off on your players. I think it does, mate. I think, yeah. I've done, I really yeah, think it does. Yeah, mate. I think, yeah. I think, I think my, my players, you know, I think Peter Sports Local is a place that a lot of players want to be. That's why we've got people playing for deals, 21, 22. Yeah. First team yeah. players, not kids. Like, they're young. Yeah. Young, don't get me wrong. Yeah. First team players have played the level because yeah. they come into the environment. And, you know, we can talk about tactics. I think I'm tactically aware. Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone done a job on us last year. Uh, maybe Kettering did when we played them, to be honest with you. I think that was mentality as well. Yeah. I'm tactically aware. I think I understand the game. I think our sessions are good. Um, you know, I could talk about it more and try and, um, you know, tr tr try and put more emphasis on me. But it's not about that. It's yeah. Success for me is about the environment, John. The environment that we can give these players. And that's why people want to be a part of it. I really do. You know, you know, you know um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a massive Man United fan. Um, but for me, Jurgen Klopp, that's his... That's his from the outside looking in, that's what he, he seems to have. What he's, they, say, they say he's a great manager and he's a great coach, but what everyone says about him, he's a great man manager and he, he's, he's someone that you will go through a brick wall for. I mean, that's, mate, that's, for me, again, it's the most important thing in football. You, you tell me, I mean, you, you've played 
for professional managers. The, the managers you played your best football under are the ones you respected and liked the most. Oh, um, God, yeah. And that's, that's how it goes. If you, sorry, if you think someone, I might find it hard not to swear, it's normally my vocabulary. If, 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 you, if you find someone that you're not, let's say, you're not keen on, you're not, you know, you're not going to have them. Everyone says you should, you always yeah. give the best. Yeah, we do. But there's always an extra 10%. I don't care what you are, who you are, there's yeah. always an extra 10% for someone you've got yeah. that for. Um, I, I, I worked for, um, I worked for some managers and some, some great managers, some big name managers. Um, and people always ask me, oh, um, God, you, you know, you must have took loads from the managers that, that you liked, that were successful with. And you know what? I did, but I also remember the ones that got it wrong and the ones that didn't treat me right. Because you know what? As well, isn't it? Yeah, because you know what? I, I kind of think, right, how did that make me feel? And I thought, well, do you know what? I'm, I like to consider myself a very, very good man manager. Um, and I look after my players and we've got a good, good close bond. But um, the managers that I love playing for were the ones that, God, some of them could tell me that the sky was pink with purple spots. And I would go, all right, gaffer. And then we would just go, we just go to work. Yeah. And um, I remember Burton Albion, we, we had an unbelievable, we weren't a great individual. Yeah, yeah. So I wow. worked with night. I wow. worked with Nigel. I worked with um, Nigel for two years. Um, Nigel what signed me. What a job he did do there. Nigel. Yeah. Oh. Well, you know, he's like, like for me, he, I, I was, I, I went back to Ireland to play um, for my local, um, for my local city um, in the in the league in in Ireland, and um, I remember coming it was a summer league so March through to like October time um, very very good league obviously and then so I, I, but I come back and I'd, I'd signed for Weymouth under Gary Hill um, when Weymouth came up from the south to the conference to the, to the conference national and I got pneumonia at, at the age of 26 um, I was I was on death's door I was told I was never going to kick a football again um, and I got myself back fit, somewhere fit. And I signed for Tamworth in the conference for, for no money. But I love football. So, you know, yeah. for me, it doesn't matter about money. Um, and I remember getting a phone call towards the end of the season, March time. And I actually, I actually put the phone down because I thought it was one of the lads messing about. It was, it was Nigel Clough rang me. And he said, uh, I, went, I went, no way. I said, see you later. I put the phone down. And um, the best thing I ever did was signed for him because it, not just him, Ben Robinson, the chairman of, of, uh, of Burton Albion. Um, just a little thing about, so my son, who's now 17, was four when I signed and my little girl who's 13, she was, um, she was just born. Nigel rang me and he said, when I was going to sign, he said, uh, John, what size, what size uh, kit is your, is your kid? So I told him, he said, does your wife wear perfume? I said, that's a funny question. I said, yeah. So he said, he said, tell me which one it is. So I said to my wife, oh, you know, so she told me. When I went down to sign, there was a bottle of perfume for my wife. There was a, a, sh a short shorts and socks Burton Albion kit for my little lad. And you know what? I knew from then, I thought, I knew I was home. And that's I called Burton. management again, isn't it, mate? That's just oh, some yeah. the little details that go along, yeah. mate. Yeah. Like, I called Burton my home because, you know, I... I, sp I did 250 league games in six years and I missed a whole season through injury. So over five seasons, if you average that out, I, I was averaging 50, 50 odd games a season when, you know, when it comes to, to cup games and things like that. And he just got me to a stage where I was playing. But I, I also played for Gary Mills. Gary Mills yeah. was the youngest ever um, winner of the UEFA Champions League for Forest. And he was exactly like Nigel. And both of them played for Brian Clough. Yeah, I knew he was going back to that. Like, they've, they've both of them. I mean, I, th I think a lot more in that day. You know, I, I watch a lot of these old documentaries about Bobby Robson and Alex Ferguson. I think obviously man management was a, a you know, it was a bigger skill set, wasn't it? Yeah. And it was, yeah. It was more, football has changed in that aspect. But I, yeah. You know, an insight on what you said: you can never, you can never lose, uh, lose the value of man management. It's the best, you know, if you don't like the manager you play for, you won't play. You know, you're well, not going to play as well. Do you know what I mean? We we um, played um we played Crawley Town away and we travelled down on the Friday night and uh, the hotel was really hot 
it was roasting. I couldn't sleep. So I've gone downstairs at like 11 o'clock, half 11. And Nigel and his backroom staff were having a beer in the, in the bar. And um, I thought, oh, no. I said, you know. So he said, Mac, why are you not in bed? I said, oh, Gaffer, I can't sleep. He said, come over here. So I've gone over, sat with him. He said, do you want a beer? And I went, I thought it was a test. And I was like, no, Gaffer, no, no, I'm all right. He goes, look. He went, if you have a beer, will you sleep better? I went, yeah, probably. He went, if you sleep better, will you play better for me tomorrow? I went, yeah, yeah. I sat, I had two, I had two beers with him. Went and beat Crawley 3-1. Got man the match. Wow. So, <laughs> wow. <laughs> just, you know, every other manager would have gone, get to bed, go home. Yeah. When I was at Eastbourne Borough, the manager was a guy called Tommy Widrington. Uh, yeah. Yeah, great guy. You know, yeah. and, um, we were playing away at Pool or somewhere like that, and Tom decided we're going to stay in a hotel outside of Bournemouth. On the on the Friday nights, we trained. We, we we at Eastbourne. We trained in the mornings, Monday, Thursday, Friday mornings, right? So we trained on the Friday morning at Eastbourne, and we drove, got on the bus, and we went to Paul. We got there in the evening, and um, Tom said to all the players, he said, "Listen, if uh, if you want to have a beer, you can have a beer, but don't have a beer if you don't always have a beer. But if, if you normally have a beer at home on a Friday night, have a beer." Yeah. And obviously, all the players thought, "He's this is this is uh, something." Yeah, yeah. Than that. But, but to be fair, it wasn't. And I said, why, why have you done that? I knew anyway. But I said, why have you done that? He went, well, look, if I tell them they can't have a beer, they're going to start smuggling stuff around, right? Mm -hmm. He said, but what it was, it was three players, I think the senior players, three of the senior players both had two pints of Guinness. And that yeah. was it, went to bed. And he had it so under control. And you know, yeah, we went yeah. like 4-1 the next day. Do you know what I mean? It was yeah, great. Brilliant. I thought it was a really interesting piece of management. Because the interesting thing for me, so you guys know, is listening to you two because... There's a lot of questions, so you guys know, there's a lot of question marks over me, right? And mm -hmm. it's what kind of drives me, I guess, is that the question is, can this guy be a manager? Because for 15 years, I've been an assistant and I've been a coach, all right? Yeah. And during those 15 years, like you've just been talking about, it's like, um, you know, you, you take things from people, or you, you know, whether it's good or bad, oh, I'd do that, I wouldn't, or, or whatever it is, you know? And now this, this is what drives me, you see, this is the question mark over me. Mm -hmm. Can this guy manage we know he can assist we know he's a good coach so i hear uh but can he manage uh, mm. and do you know what the general consensus is they're waiting for me to fail and that's yeah. and i love and i love that and i know this if i yeah. fail i fail that's life that's on me right and here you go, here you go. it's a credit to you taking the, the challenge on man do you know what i mean it, well, it's, you know, like, it's on me now because you know as an assistant you know you question everything just to make sure the gaffer makes the right decision you don't always agree with it, but you back him, all right? That's your job, isn't it? And uh, listen, the challenge now is, it's, it's a great challenge for me. And hey, it's the most important thing to me, I, you know, going back to what John said, I very much agree with him. Even more so in non-league in the professional game is manage your players, the man management. Oh, well, yeah, 100%. I'll tell you. It's, 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 getting the, making, it's getting the personality mix right. Um, yeah. And getting them to, you know, the, the cliche again, you know, make them want to run for a brick. Yeah, listen, and yeah. this has been great listening to you too, you know, it's, but do you know what I found out very, very quickly? See, I, like, like we all do, we all know loads of people in the game, right? Loads and loads of people. And there's managers in my division, right, who I've known donkeys, right? Uh, some of them I've, like, I've helped uh, as a favour, out of kindness. I've prepared their pre-season for them to help them and stuff like that, right? But these guys, they all sneak. So many of these guys, they sneak around, don't they? Mm, you know, yeah. uh, behind your back. And, and I found yeah. that really, really interesting. I phoned people, right? And I said, I phoned other managers and, I, and they picked up the phone and I've even said to them, I haven't even said hello, I've gone away. And they go, what? I said, have you finished talking to all my players yet? And they're mm. like, what? I said, listen, I'll tell you what, I will send you every number of all my players. All right? Yeah. Just let me know when you're done. Yeah, yeah, you know, and it and it makes them so uncomfortable. And it's really interesting to see that they've, that they've been caught. Do, do, do you know what I mean? I'm not suggesting hey, you no, like that for one minute, by the way. Listen, just, costs, got, one thing I've learned is pick up the phone and just be honest with people. Yeah, yeah. It cost, it cost me a play the other day. Yeah, basically, I know the manager he plays for. He come to me. He asked for a deal. You know, a good player, good player. Um, cut a long story short, he asked for a deal. I went back to the club, said to him. Uh, 
you know, look, I'm just letting you know we are interested, you, you, you know, because I know you. Like, if, if I know someone, I like someone, it's not going to stop me. Yeah. Sign this player. The player's, you know, the player wants to come, he wants to come. But, um, you know, I think I've, maybe I've got worked a little bit um, because they weren't giving him what he wanted. He came to me, I told the manager, manager went to his chairman. Within an, an hour, he was staying there, which he told me he was, there wasn't staying there. Yeah. When that, within an hour, he was staying there. Um, because his, his club, he weren't going to give him what he wanted, they give him what he wanted. Do you know what I mean, which we, we was never on that page anyway. Um, yeah, he yeah. usually get a pay rise. But, but yeah. yeah, like, you know, like that's one way of looking at it. Maybe, maybe that didn't happen. Maybe, maybe it was a bit more genuine in that and, you know, things sort itself out. Who knows, boys? I wouldn't, I wouldn't like to say. But I, you know, my assistant always, you know, he's always on at me. He says, well, you, you're too honest, you're too straight. Um, but for me, look, there, 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 there's huge benefits to being, to, to acting how I act with integrity. There's huge benefits to it because... But you're a role model to your players by doing because, it. Because players know that. Players, yeah. players... 100%. It, it, some players know it, but there are negatives, mate. I'll tell you that now because I'd say it balances itself out. You miss out on players... Because, mm. because of your integrity, but you get yeah. because of your integrity. I think it balances itself out. But I'll tell you what it is, boys, yeah? And I mean this. There ain't a man who's dealt with me in non-league football, whether he's a player or whether he's a manager, who can say he's a rat. You can say... Yeah, yeah. Can't trust That's exactly how it's spot on. Everybody knows where they stand with me. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'd rather... I'd rather be... For me, like I say, the, the gains are minimal because some you benefit from, some, some you won't, Yeah. But at least off the back of that, at least off the back of that, I'm holding my head up high. I've gone through yeah. three divisions. I've met loads of different managers. You talk about people you know, like clubs and all that. I mean, football was never that much of an interest to me. Um, you talk about going up and you know this player. Like, players, yeah, I know, I, I know my players, but managers and professional managers and things like that, not really, do you know what I mean? Like, it's why mm. Dan Ferguson rings me if you ask for the game. It's like, you know, Alex Ferguson, he's a great manager in his own right. He's had promotion after promotion, wherever he's been. I've got to take that. I want to build these bridges. Yeah. Um, but I do think in other ways, John, it benefits me because I'm not influenced by all the, mm. I say, all the bullshit that goes on. Yeah, yeah. Play football. We've got our own thing going on. If I want something, I've got, I've got a few little allies to speak to, probably five, six friends in the non league management circle to speak to. Yeah. Um, most of them relationships have been initiated by them, you know, mm. and I'm receptive and I talk, yeah. But I think it works for me a lot. Do you know what I mean? I'm not, you know, I, yeah. just, I get on with what I do um, rather yeah. than what we do, rather than getting into all the jovial politics and all the rubbish that mm. goes around in football circles, mate, because there's a lot of it, isn't there? My, my, um, I, I suppose my biggest compliment that, that, that people pay me is that I get, I, so we'll, the squads that we start with on September the 19th will not be the squads that we finish with in hopefully in, in April because because there'll be comings and goings, players seven days and all this. But the players that I bring some players in and it doesn't work out for, for them. But I'll get a phone call from that same player recommending one of like another player to me. So they don't go away saying. Oh, John McGrath's backstabbing. John McGrath's this. It's a yeah, horrible yeah. club. Because, like, I'll, I'll say to him, look, it's not working out. You're a centre forward. You ain't scored in 15 games. I need to bring somebody in. Or, or the budget's been cut. You are my top earners. You've got to go. So, I think if you're honest with players, all right, it's going to hurt the first couple of days That's when hard. you get released. It's the hardest thing in football is yeah. Being- People you like and care about, the hardest thing in yeah. football is yeah. looking them in the eye. And like I say, I consider myself a bit of a man's man, do you know what I mean? But I still don't like letting people down. I don't. Yeah. No. yeah. No, I, I don't like doing it to people. And I'm people are going to have to be honest with players, yeah, right? And this yeah. is the most massive thing, right? There's two types of honest. There's the one way you want to shaft them and you want to get rid of them at the end of it. Mm. Uh, I'm being honest with you, mate. I'm just doing the right thing. I'm telling you now. Because you got yourself a better player, yeah? Yeah. Oh, there's the honesty when you sign the player. Can you do that at the beginning when you sign him? Because again, it'll balance it itself out. You'll get some. Yeah, yeah. Um, are you going to promise them the world? Promise them your money you won't give them. Promise them money that's going to be there and start the season. Promise them they're going to play every game when you know they're not, just so you can have a proper look at them. Or are you going to be honest with them when you sign the player? Not honest at the end. No, I'm, I'm an honest guy. I'm telling you the truth because you're about to shaft someone. Yeah, yeah. You be honest when you sign them. You tell them. You tell them. Uh, look, it's, it's going to be tough here for you. I believe you've got something, I believe you've got a chance, you're taking a risk in doing that. 
um, you know, like that for me, for me, that's the big, it's, that, that's, that's again, that's, that's the mark you want to be leaving with these players. So like you say, John, when they do leave, there's still a relationship there. There's still, yeah. they're yeah. still they, 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 there's still, they, 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 they've got friends that can help you or they're not going to tell their friends, stay away from him, he's an idiot. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. that's, you know, it's, it's all part of that man management and it's all part of, mm. you know, it's, it's all part of that. Honestly, I think it will it, define the success any of us will have. In, in management, do you know what I mean? As much you as go, you go, football. No, J- Jimmy, we, we, um, we played away last year. It was, I think it was like one of the first five or six games of the season. And um, one of the, a couple of the lads um, who they travelled together, they, they, the kid's car was broke or something. So I said, look, I'll come and get you and we'll go to the game together. Now, this, one, this, this kid went out and scored, scored two the same day. So I was travelling home with him. And he's, he's, in my, he's in my passenger seat. General player's in the back. I'm not going to name the manager of the club. And the manager rang my player because obviously he thought he was travelling back from the game on his own. We'd just beaten this team. He'd scored two. And the manager just rang him. He knows he's, he's on a contract with me. He knows he's got to come and put seven days in or, or whatever it may be. And he's rang him directly. So, and he's sitting next to you. And I'm I've driving. I've never done it in five years. I'm, I'm driving... And, uh, and the player's gone to me, he's gone, he's gone gaffer, look at this. So I, I'm laughing. I said, look, just, just take it. So it's, it, again, Jimmy, like you were saying, offer him the, the, the world, look, come and play for me. It's this, it's that. And uh, I rang the manager the following day. And I said, um, I, hear you, um, I hear you rang my player yesterday. And he swore blindly on the phone to me. Mac, I wouldn't do it to you. I wouldn't do it to you, mate. You know, you're a good wow. guy in football. I'm like, Wow. The same, the same manager went through 72 players last year. 72. Yeah, well, there you go, man. But do you know what? I'm sat here smiling because I know. Do you know what I mean? I know. And I'll, I'll be honest with you. If someone does that to me and I know them, I'll ask them. I will just... I'll, what I did, I'll, yeah. I'll, just, I'll, 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 I'll yeah. ring them up and I'll ask them. I won't let it fester. I'll just put it straight on them and say, that. Yeah. you know, like, if we're going to talk, if we're going to get on, you can't... But we all accept that play, listen, players are going to come and go, right? Yeah. We all yeah. know each other. So, like, listen, Jimmy, if, if you had a player and I'm thinking, do you know what? I really like that player and I'm going to put a seven day in. Uh, Jimmy, I'd phone you and go, Jimmy, look, I know you're not going to like this, mate, but I'm going to put a seven day in for your player. That's all you can do. That's yeah. all yeah. you can do. Exactly. You know I mean? And if, if you do that to me, I will say, listen, I'll wave the seven days. You can talk to him now. If the player's going to go, he's going to go, right? Yeah. The, the, the one thing I will say is in that process, yeah, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, if you've got a relationship with the manager, but sometimes you think you, you, you'll take a punt on a player. Do, do you understand what I mean? You'll take a punt mm. on a player because you're in a shit. I mean, you, you know, you talk about changes through the season earlier, John. Like, we, yeah. we don't really make a, make a lot. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. we've usually done all right, but the season we struggled. We'd fuck, sorry, I saw that. We tried... Um, we tried to make as many, you know, we just kept trying to get it right, get it right, get it right. Yeah, yeah. Like, so I think that depends on how your season's gone, doesn't it? You know, naturally, yeah, definitely. Best yeah. Way to make changes. If you ain't successful, you're going to need to. But I still wouldn't just take punts on players of managers I know because it's, you know, I would if I didn't know a club. I think I'll try and I'll tell the boy what I'm doing. I'll try yeah. and I'm a try and bit. I, I'd want to be sure, you know, if I got on with someone, I'd want to be sure that that player's going to. In my head, anyway, he's going to positively impact what we do. I see only yeah. what I have, really. I wouldn't do it for the sake of it, because in the end, they're going to think, you know, he's, he's, he's taking the piss of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. My, my biggest learning curve <laughs> in management was uh, that when things are going wrong, and, and, uh, and we do get it wrong uh, as managers, and we will do. You know, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll, you know, we'll think we're signing a great player, but um, and it's not... It, the first couple of years not acting quite swiftly enough to, to nip it in the bud. And like, I now, now I'm like, and my assistant says to me, Jesus, you, you, you've gone ruthless. And I said, but it, I, I'm honest. It's not ruthless. I'm, I'm honest. And I, because I think if you let something fester, like you were saying, Jim, I think, I think you've got to hit it, hit it, bang, kind of head on, you know? You've got to, you've got to have to be prepared to have, uh, some horrible conversations. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know that. Yeah, mate, I hate them. I hate them. And you, 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 you got to think as well. But, um, 
like we've 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 got the same core. core. We've got the same core of players. Um, probably, probably down to about it was. I mean, I just had it in the summer. The first player I signed, Abby, he's had five years with me. You know, it was something that naturally happened. It weren't a conversation that I had to have where, you know, you say, uh, Avelina Vieira scored 200 goals for us for coming up the levels. He's dropped down the step for us. He's play with his Got a lot of time for him. He's had kids while he's been with us. We've given baby clothes. I think a lot of the boy, Portuguese boy. Just think a lot of him. I really think a lot of him, and you know, it's happened. It's happened naturally, anyway, boys. But what what I would say is that conversation. I would I would have it because I'm a I'm a manager. You know, I'm a manager. It's my job to do it. But I I I hate it. I hate that side of the game. I hate the side of the game where mm. where you have to you know you have to go and break someone's heart but you know at the end of the day if you've got good characters around you've got good people around you they get it they understand I, I, yeah. I, I do think yeah. that's the truth you know that's one of the hardest things I've had to do so far is uh, I, look I took a punt on a player uh, towards the end of before lockdown you know great kid what, what, listen, what a, a beautiful human being do you know what I mean great guy very popular in the change room very quickly Just and, and that was great but it was niggling me something weren't quite right and then obviously I made the decision when I knew the season was over, I thought, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to keep him. I'm going to ring him and tell him because he needs to start thinking about where he can play next you know, and not lead him down the path. Mm -hmm. and it was horrible phoning him because, you know, he's such a yeah. lovely kid. And I just, you know, and he was so excited, bless him, because it was the highest he'd been. Lewis, yeah. I don't know if you know, is actually a, quite a big club. Yeah, yeah. Went on its backside a bit over the recent years. And he was so excited to come and play and it was horrible having to phone him and, I'm just honest with him, you know, mm. what can he do? He, you know, he's a winger, he said, oh, you know, can, you know, what, what, you know tell me my why, why? And I said, look, you know, I'm, I want to use your money to bring in somebody else uh, mm. that's, that's going to come from a higher level. So I told him the truth and, and I, said, I said to him, look, you, you go to any manager, tell them to ring me about you. And I've, I've had two or three managers ring mm. me and say, what's he like? And I said, look, he's a great kid. You know, and, and I told him why I let him go. So, yeah. And Hugo, it's 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 that aftercare as well that that we yeah, we as managers, I, I you know I think we're you know I think we should give players aftercare. Like I I I know I've been harping on about you know the players we've sold to football league clubs, but yeah, they're nice. To we've all, but we've also got academy players who've come through the academy and are at Belper, Loughborough Dynamos. Yeah. They've you know so players who come from nothing but. They're still playing at a decent standard. They're getting a bit of money, uh, you know, and they're playing football. And to me, I'm I'm probably as proud of them that we've had that little. They've come into me. They've not quite made it with me, and I've been honest and said, look, you know, go away, play, play forty games a season, and yeah. uh, you know, it, it's it's that aftercare I think that we have to have with our players. That that I I think the EFL clubs in the Premier League. Listen, sure. There's I, no think, listen, I think it's horrific. You know, you, you yeah. guys will know this as well. You know, over the last 15 years, the amount of players that I've seen come out of the pro game into to non-league and are lost. You yeah. know, and some and and then they fall out. There's some that don't. Um, you know, and this is what I mean. I'm trying to. I'm, I'm talking to a player at the moment, right? Who's actually, funny enough, coming out of Mansfield. Right? Okay. But he lives to be from Brighton, which is just down the road from Lewis. Yeah. And I've said to him, listen, I understand this is this is like mess with your head because your hope of being a pro at Mansfield is gone, mm. right? And I know it's a lot to take in, you know? And I want you to know that if you come to me, I will give you a platform yeah. to, to, for, for you to try and do it. I said, I'm not going to promise you anything, but I can give you a platform and I'll work with you and I'll help yeah. you, but the rest is up to you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But for, but for that player to know that that there's that support because I don't think it exists. Listen, most of these players they get to go to a they get to go to an exit trial. They're, they're horrific. They're like cattle. Yeah. The way yeah. people talk about those players. Yeah, it's really good size. Yeah. Oh look, he's got big thigh. They're talking yeah. like they are literally looking at cattle. Yeah. And I find it so horrific to the extent that at one point I put on my own showcase games right about five years ago for players that yeah. were coming out. I put games on, I videoed them, and I sent them everywhere. And yeah. it was brilliant because I've got a player, for example, who moved to St Mirren. Two weeks later, he's playing for St Mirren at Celtic brilliant. Park. 
what and it, it it just really 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 annoys me you know that these and there's no like the, like you said the aftercare it's it's huge because at the moment like the, the topic of mental health is is everywhere isn't it and, and yeah. rightly so by the way yeah yeah but it's also the same don't forget for managers that are out of work yeah so I, I my training ground is open to anybody any manager mm -hmm. that's out of work come down if i know you or if i don't know you ring me up come on in come on down we, we, we had a kid on um on loan from a a championship club and they i got a phone call at like 20 past one i was in the i was in the ground preparing and uh it was a number I didn't know, and I said, oh, hi. Um, and he said the player's name. He said, uh, I'm, I'm his driver. So, so that he's, this kid's 19. He's got his own car. He's got his own driving license. But the football club put a drive run for him to bring yeah. him to Michelob Sports. And this kid got out of the car, Louis Vuitton wash bag under his thing, big headphones on. And I said to him, you can get those off straight away. And, and the kid now has been released, hasn't got a club, didn't do anything with me, was, but came... Kem had a look at our change rooms like, oh, these are a bit, these are a bit, these are okay. Can I, can I ask you a question then, right? Yeah. We, we all get sent clips of players. Yeah. Right? Uh, looking great. You know, you get a centre half who's doing Cruyff turns and pulling out all these beautiful passes and stuff. Yeah. Not only do you not see them actually defending in these, uh, <laughs> in these videos, but it's the music that they put on it, right? Mm. And I've got this thing about it at the moment because it's all this, it's always this drill music, right? Yeah. So then I just asked the question, who, who are they actually trying to, uh, whose attention they're trying to get here? Yeah. Are they trying to get their friends to look good, right? Or are they trying to get a 45-year-old bald guy uh, attention? And the worst thing is, and this is probably wrong with me, as soon as the music starts, listen, I love music, right? I just turn it off. No, yeah. but I'll, I'll say this now as well. So everyone knows publicly, whatever I do in the game, whatever I don't, I don't watch these videos because... Uh. Because I'll tell you all they do, boys. They only show you the good things players do. Oh, listen. They only show you the good things they do. I mean, I'll, you, totally. look at players, you look at players' history um, to see where they've been and what they've done if you haven't seen them. Sometimes you have to sign behind and you have a look at them. I understand that. But Jimmy, Jim, mean, Jimmy, Jimmy, somebody, somebody, somebody at Burton Albin uh, put, because I was there for six years, they put this, this piece together about me and, uh, and the games I played. It's on YouTube. If you look at it, You'd think you were watching Zidane, and I'll tell you now. I, <laughs> I, I, was, now John. I was no Zidane. I'll tell you that now. <laughs> no, but listen, you know, similar haircut. It's different, yeah. For you, John, yeah. Yeah, right? it's different for you, John. Different you when you played two hundred and fifty games for a club. Yeah, you weren't. Yeah. Listen, you weren't that video. Really. You won a league. You won a league title. Um, league two title. You played against Steven Gerrard. Um, you've heard, yeah, that, John, you've heard yeah. that. Right. We, we 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 can say that. You know, we can say that. But when it's from. Well, Dan, when it's just from no one, mate. Do you know what I mean? <clears throat> yeah. Oh, yeah. Like I'm, I'm. The comparison is th these clips are like they're they're little snippets of. And do you know what? It's probably not even snippets of my game. I was a box to box midfielder. I'd I'd kick my granny downstairs for three points. You know, I I you know I I was a I was a no Under Armour black boots kind of you know old school. You know, but That's the inside the, these videos, what you've just said there, they're not showing you a reflection. No, them, no. nothing. They like, do the bad bits of the game. It just shows you the best. That's why I watch them because yeah. I, I, I watch. I don't watch all of them, but I, I always watch. Like to watch centre defenders or, or fullbacks, mm. but more so centre defenders because I'm waiting to see just out of curiosity. Am I going to see you uh, head a ball? Am I going to see you defend a cross? Am yeah. I going to see you tackle? And you never do. You know? Yeah, it's 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 always it's always the ones that they're opening the ball out of their feet and, and zinging it eighty yards yeah. to the yeah. But it's like, a, lovely, I, but I, I don't I'm not signing. I don't want to sign you for that. I want I need to know. Can you defend your box? Can you stay with your man? You yeah, know? you. I always look at players. Back, and, you defend the back post well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I I I had players I played with uh, at Burton. You know, fantastic players, but you couldn't take them to. Appleton Stanley on a Tuesday night in November because because it's it's a it's eight you get changed in a porter cabin and if you watch clips of me in that game it was literally hooking things on heading yeah. things but people would say God you had a good game tonight yeah because I dominated I dominated my my midfielder it was yeah. it, it wasn't me being pretty zinging balls eighty yards it's it's, Boys, it's, in, football, it's football in terms in terms of that recruitment you know like 
every, every if, like, when you have quick successive promotions, you learn in players from another level, it's hard because you know when you're managing a team, it's Saturday, Tuesday, Thursday. If you do it properly, it's relentless. You don't get a lot of time to go and watch games. Obviously, you can get out and watch a few, but you yeah. don't get much time. If you go and watch a game, it's usually an opponent rather than a player. Yeah. Um, you've got coming up, yeah? So, um, like, the one person we've got local to us, um, you know, I know who's done that is Steve Evans. Mm. And I said to him, like, um, yeah, because he went through the Leeds quick thing on the league. I said, yeah, yeah. I said how, how did you sign your... Your players for the next year, you know, how how you got an insight? What's 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 right for the league above? Do you know what I mean? And he just goes, I sign players who, have, you know, his insight into like how he puts it together tactically, which I don't, by the way. I mm. sign players who have uh, played a lot of games in the league above the year before. It was that mm. simplistic for him. That's how he found his players because, you know, you can imagine it's it's not impossible, isn't it? It's not impossible to have knowledge of every level you go. Up. Like, oh god, yeah. If you yeah. start at level, you've been at your level for a few years now, John. Yeah, it's my, it's the first time I've actually got to manage in the same league two years running. This season. Yeah. Because even though we stayed at step four, we went from the northern to the south. Yes. Yeah. First time I've had the status quo. It's the first time I've actually got an advantage of knowing the other team's players, knowing how they work. Uh, I've got videos of every game. I watch them all. What 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 we play. I've actually got an insight now into what we're against. Um, but it's impossible to to keep going bounce, bounce, bounce different leagues and to know what you're up against. You ask me a question mm. about the players now, I'll tell you. You would have asked me the, the start of the season. I could have told you anything about the league he was coming out of. I can't tell you anything about the league I'm going into or not too much. You see what I mean? Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. Hard. Yeah. it's hard, it's hard. And it's hard not to get sucked into these videos. Yeah. And then the other one you get, you get someone who's dropping down levels. Wants the food quid. You look at his record, you're like, wow, man, look at what this boy's done. Do you know what I mean? Mm, that yeah. don't tell you about his mentality, don't tell you about his injuries. It don't tell you where he's at with, his, yeah. with, with, with where he's at with football. Yeah, I mean, look, you miss it, just said it there. <laughs> you know, I got, I got sucked in. I'm sure he wouldn't mind me saying either. You know, because like, we definitely weren't right for him. He weren't right for us. We had Trezor, Gamana, the Wild Wild come in for a game last year. Mm. You know, it's the only time I've ever done anything like that. Do you know what I mean? Like the Brighton, yeah. probably a bit too much for me. I'll be honest with you. Um, I used to watch him doing his back flips and whatever. As he moved to Peterborough, yeah. he come training, mate. I tell you, some of the stuff he was doing with the ball, I've never seen. Mm. It was just, it was unbelievable. Like twenty-five minutes half hour, he was unbelievable. The other twenty-five minutes, he didn't move. Do you yeah. know what I mean? But I thought to myself, I thought we'll have a go at it. We'll have a go. Like, it's Trezor, Lamar, the Wild, the Wild. You've got, you know, we're gonna. We've got to have a go at how can you not? So we've come in. The first thing I found is um, I'm checking myself on the team talk. You feel like it's someone who's worked with Bobby Robson, um, you know, like it was Harry Redknapp's another one he's worked with. Do you know what I mean, at length, Galatasaray Champions League, played with Alan Shearer. Um, I'm, I'm second guessing myself a little bit more than I normally would. Probably speeding things out that I would normally say. Um, yeah. You mean to do it, John? I didn't mean to do it at all, mate, but. It's just a mindset when you go in there, but it's learning mm. these lessons, isn't it? And then, then there's a team. The, the, the game became a sideshow. The whole game became a sideshow. Yeah. Know? I don't let the subs um, take shots in the warm-up. It's the players who are starting. I let Lua Lua take a shot in the warm-up. Um, straight again, the players are giving me stick. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, the, the game, we, we was, I think we was third. We played a team who was fighting relegation and lost 4-0 at home. So... You know, like, I accept, and I think as a manager, you've got to be able to do this or you ain't going to go far. I accept the mistakes I made that night. Yeah. And I will be resolute never to make those mistakes again. Yeah. Yeah, you've got to look in the mirror. Yeah, yeah. 100%. I don't know yeah. enough people do that. But, you know, that's, that's a big, big no-go for me now. But um, that's just an insight into how these things can go wrong. If, if you are signing the wrong kind of player at the wrong, wrong time, it's not just... You if I'm honest, I'm trying, the players that I'm trying to sign, I, I've either worked them before or I know them anyway. Yeah. And I, and I won't listen, I'll say this as well, yeah. It's something to do with him. He was an absolute gentleman. He come down and watched us yeah. since. You know, I've spoke to him a few times. The, the bloke is a gentleman. He's the nicest, mm. nicest, politest man in the world. He just wanted to help. Yeah. Um, but in the same breath, like, you know, like, it, it didn't. It didn't. Yeah. Not, not for him. He didn't want that. He just wanted to be another... People forget about these footballers who drop down. You know, like, they are just normal blokes, aren't they? Yeah. 
they're just normal blokes who want to play football, keep playing football like you did, Tom. You just yeah, want yeah. to keep playing. Um, and you don't want the airs and graces when you go in the changing room. But with him, it was, you know, where we come from, step six to where we are, it was, uh, you know, it was... It was a bit. It was a bit of an eye opener, really. You know. Yeah. Oh, Just have yeah. to jump in there, guys. Time is uh, really flowed on there with a absolutely fascinating conversation between the three of you. Um, you see a lot there talking about the environment, looking at the sort of the dressing room and that match day dressing room. So, another sort of final question is: We're looking towards September seventeen. Obviously, there's going to be one or two right. things that you're going to have to adapt to. I mean, what? What do you see as being the biggest challenge you have in sort of making sure that your team that you pick on that day is going to feel safe and ready to play that first match of the season? Well, I, go on, go on, Hugo. Go yeah, on. I was just listen, to be fair, my football club, because we're quite unique in the sense that the, uh, the men and the women, the women's team and the men's team, are the budgets are exactly the same, all right? And the women's team play in the women's championship, okay? Because of their level that they play at, they play like in the league with Aston Villa, Manchester United, all them sort of women's teams. The protocols that they have to put in place within the round the ground, the changing rooms, all this mm. sort of stuff is, is huge. So because we'll follow that, because it's already going to be put in place, the players will be sort of, should feel safe. The biggest challenge, from what I understand, one of the biggest, just lots of them, we're only allowed six players at a time in the changing room. So the question is now, half-time team talk, pre-match yeah. talks, that sort of stuff. Because if I'm stood on the pitch at half-time and it's chucking it down with rain and I'm trying to explain something to like, to make a tactical point say on the board, right? Mm. who can see it? Well, you can all see what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. So what do you do? And that's got to change. Look, we can't, you can't go back and be playing football with six players in the change room. No, that well, you, no, but that's what they're saying. Only six players. I'm hoping by September the 19th. Well, I hope, I hope, I hope so as, I hope so as well. But don't be surprised if, it, if it, you don't know. Yeah. So my chairman, to be fair, he's turned around to me and said that he's got one of these portable marquees. He said, "I'll just put that." Well, that's that's exactly what I just thought. Well, in terms, in terms <laughs> of that, please, Steve, going back to it, you know, it's. It's um that's not my worry. Do you know what I mean? Like I said to me boys yesterday, the first the first thing I've just said, if you're not comfortable, you don't want to be here. No one's making you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But obviously, you know, I've read all this. Uh, what is it from the FA? The guidelines. You know, we've got we've got our risk assessment in place. We know what we're doing with with players. For me, it's all systems going. You know, in terms of the, the ground safety and all that, it's, that's not for me. That's not a conversation for me. That's up to my chairman. Yeah, but you've got to think about things it's that they're tough. saying that, that players have got to turn up already changed and things like that. Yeah, sure, of course. There's a few, I, but I, I, I agree I with you. It's not my concern to put all the things in place. That's what other people at the club are for. Exactly. There's right. things so we're going to have to adapt to. Terms work. But this is how we work with it. Arrival, we talk to the players about symptoms. Um, changing rooms are out of bounds. For pre-season training. Oh yeah, yeah, same. I can trace. You know, it's obvious. I've got a barber yeah. shop. It's exactly the same. We keep all the relevant details of players. Yeah. Travel to training. You train on your own. It's all the common sense. Yeah, yeah. Social distancing. Use your common sense. If I'm talking to you, yeah. don't stand. You know, you know, next to someone. You, know, you should have a bit of space in big fields. Yeah. Um, drinks. Everyone brings their own. Yeah. Um, kit. Everyone wears their own kit, and everyone takes it and washes it. Whether that's first team kit, whether that's. Uh, Training kit, whether that's bibs, whatever it might be, hand sanitizer on site, and all the equipment washed yeah. wash down with the vest. Uh, exactly just, the same. Yeah, exactly the same. Yeah, that's yeah. How, exactly how my training ground looks right now. Yeah, for me, mate, that's 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 where we are. That's all you can do, Hugo. Like, yeah. You know, um, I just you have to disinfect the goalposts and everything at the end of training. And but but, but if they turn around and me and say when the season starts, you can only have you can't have six players in the changing room. I'll be giving them a team talk outside because you you can't do that. You no, can't. no, no, but it, it, could, oh, no, it, it, it could stay like that, Jimmy. So we have to be. If it does, I'll, I'll, I'll stay outside. You know what I mean? There's no mm. way I'm going into a changing room with six players at a time. It's just not going to work. No, 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 say no. You can't, you can't, because then you've got to have two, or th you've got to have two to three team talks. Yeah, yeah well, exactly. Doing that. Defenders in the goal here, then you bring the midfield and you bring the tackle. And then yeah, yeah, you can't, you can't do it. You can't do it. It's, it's not. It's just. And if you want to make a tactical point at half-time, it doesn't just affect your striker. They've all got to know. 
Yeah, mate, I'll, I'll, listen, I couldn't do it. There's... No, no, listen, I've I, I got a feeling there'll be a few, a few portable marquees. Do you know what? You should, we should go into business of uh, football portable marquees. marquees. The four of us <laughs> would probably clean up going into this season. Mate, I just hope, I just hope to be honest with you, there's common sense comes into it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if, if, look, you can't tell me that, that, that this is going to happen on the first day of the season. The reason I say it is because you can't tell me it's okay. This is common sense, what we keep going back to. If the players are going to stand next to each other on the corner, man mark. Um, I don't, listen, I totally... I I'm totally, just saying, I'm just, I'm not about you, Hugo, I'm about the FA, yeah? No, no, I totally know what you're going to say. If, yeah, if you can't tell us that we can go and kick two bells or whatever out of each other on a pitch, nail each other with tackles, whatever else comes into it, you know, um, breathe on each other at corners... But we can't sit in a dressing room and give a team talk, you know. No, or... It's crazy. It's like, you know, you, 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 you watch the Premier League football and you see all the subs in the stand with their mask on, but then they go on the pitch and they, you know. Yeah, but mate, it, it, it just can't happen, can it? It just, it, it can't happen, you know. And it says way. as well, you know, like, um, you know, training should be that, you know, when you're when there's a break in training, everyone should social distance and then you can start big contact again. Yeah, I see that, mate. I see that when I read it. I mean, it's bizarre. I just think that's, that make doesn't, it's, it's just pointless. Crazy. Yeah, it's, it's bizarre, isn't it? Like, it's, listen, I understand some of the logic, yeah? Like, um, you know, there's, there's bits about the social distancing. Like, for instance, you, you can go in a pub, or no, you can go in a restaurant, but you can't go in a shop without a mask. Or you can go yeah. in a pub without a mask, but you can't go in, yeah? And what they're trying to do around the country, which is, which is obvious, they're trying to limit risk. Like, so, like, we'll take a bit of risk there, but not a bit, bit of risk there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And over the majority of it, with all these protocols in place, We'll have less. We'll have less spread. I get that, but in football, it's 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 all the same people mixing together all uh, all the you know all the time. Yeah. So you're not you can't you can't minimise the risk if you can train together. Then you should travel. You should be able to travel together if you can do this together. You know, yeah. like on a corner, then you can sit together in a dressing room doing something like me. And I hope, yeah. I hope by September the nineteenth. Yeah, yeah, sorted. Away travel, right. away travel to longer games is going to be interesting because normally we, you know, clubs will use a mini bus or a bus, a coach, whatever, won't they? Yeah. At the moment, they're saying, well, you can't travel in cars together, right? So then you, you're taking sixteen players a hundred miles away, and that's sixteen cars plus staff. Yeah, like 20, 22 cars that are going separately. I, can't, I, can't see, I honestly can't see. Okay, so let, let John, John Penny's been sort of patient, patiently listening to this. Let John have the final word then on this before we wrap up. And maybe on that sort of subject with the travel as well. I mean, whatever the ins and outs are of it, ideally you just want to create a, an environment where your players feel secure. Yeah, I think, I think you know, listen to the to Jimmy and Hugo, I think we're we're all first and foremost, you know, we're we're you know we're managers and you know dads and you know decent human beings. So you know you know you want to you want to be you want to be safe. You want to make sure everybody's safe because we don't want to bring it home with us and you want players to bring it home. But ultimately, we got to try and get back to some form some of uh, normality um, in terms of the 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 ground structure. How it's going to work? Uh, it's going to be guided by my chairman. Uh, and my board of directors, they deal with that. I've got a very, very good club physio who uh, deals with the protocols, players' protocols. But, um, you know, we just don't know. We just don't know. Uh, Travelling, they might say, yes, you can travel on a bus together. You know, if we have to travel 16, 18 cars to South Shields next year, do you know what? To play a game of football, I travel to the earth to play yeah. a game of football. So, well you know, said. Well said. Yeah. I think that's a, a good point to uh, leave that discussion on for today. Um, Jimmy, Hugo, John, it's been fantastic listening to Thank you. you.